Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here on the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries on the Hannover Fair 2018. I invite you now to come closer, sit down here, uh, take a drink and enjoy the next interview. My name is Falco Haag and I will lead you the next 20 minutes through our following talk and our interview partner will be Mr. Michael Isma, the sales manager from EMS, which was the first company in Europe with a Type 4 pressure vessel and he will now speak with us about the next generation of pressure vessels. Please welcome with me Mr. Isma. Thank you. Sir. And to the audience, if you have any specific questions during our talk, just raise your hand and I will Danke. come down with the microphone. Okay, Mr. Isma, at first, uh, what's the background of EMS basically? Yeah, um, EMS is a um, relatively young company. We are um, about five years old and uh, we belong to a, a mid-size company, 550 people, employees. Um, uh, which is uh, ETC. This is a company who is mainly working in nuclear uh, technology. And uh, the main know-how is um, manufacturing, developing and manufacturing uh, of large cylindrical uh, carbon fiber uh, parts. Yeah? This is what we need in the nuclear business and uh, we decided uh, five years ago also to go into uh, other areas uh, to, um, yeah, uh, supply items uh, which can be used in other markets than the nuclear market. Okay, and give you, can you give us a short overview about the, uh, your pressure vessels for hydrogen? Do you only offer the Type 4 now? Yeah, um, yeah one key product is, uh, are the pressure vessels. Um, type 4 pressure vessels, um, just to explain what, what they are and uh, how they are um, um, how they are designed. You have inside, uh, you have a, um, a plastic liner, yeah, a different plastic liner, and um, they are reinforced with uh, carbon fiber. Yeah? And our uh, company can, um, um, has a special manufacturing uh, procedure. These are filament winding, um, where you can exactly um, uh, make the pressure vessels like um, the requirements are. You know? uh, type 4 pressure vessels are made for 500 bar, so you can imagine 500 bar is uh, quite a high uh, pressure and there are high forces uh, which are um, coming into the product. Okay, and what's the difference to Type 3 for example, and do you offer also them? Um, yeah, Type 3 is um, um, is um, alu alumina, uh, a metal liner inside, is alumina, and is also reinforced with, um, with carbon fiber. I would say this is the standard of today. Uh, and there are also type two, and these are steel um, um, tubes, uh, reinforced with uh, carbon fiber. Um, okay, and uh, which properties uh, of your uh, uh, newest, or of, of your type four pressure vessels are so unique, or as, uh, uh, what, what pr properties can they stand for? Yeah, so wh um, why do we use uh, type four? Um, we can go to higher pressures, um, um, and um, we can provide, uh, let's say, a reasonable weight. Yeah? In the future, when more consumers for uh, hydrogen will be in the field, um, uh, then um, you have to transport from the production site to the uh, fueling station, you have to transport uh, quite a high amount of, um, uh, of uh, hydrogen. And um, if you go with um, type 2, type 3 uh, pressure vessels, um, you have, if you go to higher uh, pressures, uh, you have to use stronger liners, you have to use more carbon fiber and the weight is higher compared to type 4. Yeah. So it's about the weight and also about how much can be uh, yeah. stored inside and yeah. that uh, exceeds then the, the, uh, the range that uh, I can drive with. Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Uh, we are showing here uh, in our booth uh, D49, if you, you are all invited to join us. Um, we are showing there um, the original size of um, type 4 pressure vessels which we have actually um, in order, uh, which we are delivering uh, by the end of the year for a fueling station for buses. Yeah? 
and uh, you can see you can see them uh, how they are integrated in a container and um, there are different applications where we use this 500 bar type for um, uh, pressure vessels in the future. Yes, yeah? this would have well, been the my next, next question. question. Okay. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, then let's just talk about that. Uh, yeah. In which use cases these pressure hydrogen vessels, uh, is, it, is this a topic? Yeah, so one uh, use case is uh, certainly a bus uh, fueling station. Uh, normally buses have 350 bar uh, hydrogen tanks on board and uh, we have 500 bar in our container and the bus comes and then you can fill it directly without having um, a compressor or additional equipment. Um, we see also other application. This is one uh, application which is in the fueling station. The other application is we have to transport it from uh, the production site to the fueling uh, station and that means uh, that there is a truck if you have a mobile pipeline, no? there is a truck which has to uh, go over the, uh, over the street and bring the, um, the hydrogen to the uh, consumer. And today we have trucks with 200 bar, maybe 300 bar pressure vessels, and they, they are maybe carrying 200 kilos, 300 kilo of hydrogen. So with our container, the container we are showing here uh, in uh, Hannover, uh, we will um, be able to transport 1,000 kilo of hydrogen or even if, um, if we optimize it again, uh, we can go up to maybe 1,500 kilograms or even 2,000. Okay, so the mobile pipeline is also increasing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, regarding to the three use cases you already mentioned now, are there different requirements for, uh, from the, these applications regarding, for example, to the pressure? Yeah, of course. Um, Heavy-duty vehicles, for example, like or buses, uh, they only have uh, 350 bar uh, pressure vessels on board. We are also um, uh, providing these kind of pressure vessels, but in Type 4. Um, and um, they have space enough, so the tubes can be a little bit longer. Um, it's um, in cars. We have uh, a couple of um, engineering uh, orders where we work with car OEMs. Um, um, to supply type 4 um, 700 bar um, uh, pressure vessels because uh, there um, the range is important. Yeah? We will not buy uh, any um, uh, fuel cell car if the range is not sufficient and um, the space is limited so you need high, higher pressure than 500 bar to obtain this, um, yeah, this uh, range. Sure, sure. Uh, now, looking a little bit more to your development uh, aspects of EMS, uh, what are you working on at the moment? Yeah, at the moment we are, um, as I said, we, are, we have an order for um, two fueling stations and um, we are qualifying the type 4 um, uh, pressure vessel for European uh, standards, according to European standards. Uh, this takes a long time. We have to make fault. Uh, we have to fall in them down. We have to shoot at the uh, pressure vessels. We have to um, to make 3G um, transport uh, acceleration tests. Uh, so and we have to do a lot of paperwork until they are accepted. This will be uh, finished in uh, August, September. Uh, by the end of the year, we are going to deliver the uh, fueling stations. And um, yeah, and then we are looking into yeah into the future. And then the mass market can come. Yeah, and then the mass market can come. Then these uh, pressure vessels are available, either as single uh, bottles for integrators, people who who know something about the gas industry, um, they can buy it or um, yeah, complete systems. And I can imagine that some challenges uh, had to be overcome, or that, are, that there are still some challenges uh, with this certification. Can you give us a short look inside? Yeah, um, the certification process is really, really uh, tough. And uh, um, but our engineers are—they um, are, uh, let's say, on one hand side, we want to, to produce. A product uh, which is cheap enough for the market so we have to reduce the amount of carbon fiber for example which we are using but on the other side uh, we need a, a long-lasting product uh, we need to fulfill all these uh, requirements and uh, so so there's always uh, let's say we have to find the right way there and that is very challenging 
Okay, so hopefully everything goes well for you and you have the certification then in the summer. This is the short term now. Um, what about the middle or long term developments? Is it still possible to increase the energy density? In vessels, in such vessels? Yeah, of course, we can go to higher uh, pressures. Uh, we can go to, we are discussing to, uh, going to 700 bar or 900 bar. Uh, but we always have to see the business case at the end of the day. I mean, you have to have the infrastructure, you need uh, compressors to go to higher pressures. Um, and uh, we have to calculate, is this really economic anymore? Yeah, we have a lot of requests for this, but uh, that is um, the big question mark. Yeah. Okay, and uh, with the new certification, with all the activities here that you see on the fair, do you think the market for hydrogen picks up now? Uh, definitely yes, um, because um, one thing are the type 4 pressure vessels where we are working on for, um, for these fueling st stations, but we have also a few um, development projects with um, car manufacturer and also heavy duty manufacturer um, to integrate type 4 tanks into their new uh, cars or their new vehicles. Yeah? And uh, that means these cars, they will be uh, on the road maybe in two years and uh, then are more consumer in place and then uh, I think uh, the H2 uh, industry can supply more hydrogen and the demand goes up and uh, we are all happy. <laughs> all right, <laughs> great, this sounds really great, optimistic. Uh, and uh, are you also looking for more cooperation partners uh, or you're looking to the audience now who in uh, particular should uh, talk to you after this interview or come to your booth? Yeah, of course. Everybody is invited to join us uh, who, who needs uh, pr pressure vessels. Uh, uh, as I said before, we supply complete systems or um, single bottles uh, if, if customers are able to integrate them in their systems. And uh, yeah, we are happy to work uh, together. So please come to our booth. Yeah, and the booth is number D49 and you find Michel Isma there and EMS. Um, yeah, thank you very much uh, in the audience and thank you very much, uh, Herr Isma, for uh, this interesting interview. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Dankeschön. Okay.